I really like the, you know, I like doing the research. I really like doing the research. I like going out and doing the investigations. I think it's a good time. I, it's a, I mean, it keeps me out of bars. But, uh, no, but no, I mean, I'm out, I'm having a good time. But I think learning more and more about this field is the big thing. Uh, yeah, everybody wants to find that holy grail. Everybody wants to get, the, you know, that full body apparition on video. You know, I just, I haven't had that happen to me yet. You know, there's, but I really think the biggest thing is, you know, learning as much as you possibly can about it. And each time you go out, you learn a little bit more. You learn another technique. Uh, the more groups that you network with, you start learning new techniques from these guys. You know, I can show them something that I've tried or that Stan has tried, and in turn, they show me something that they've done that helps me learn a little bit more about what I'm doing. And uh, so I'm really honest, I think that going out and doing the hunt is, is the important part more than it is just getting that evidence. I can go on 100 investigations, 99 of them are going to come up with nothing. You know, and that one is going to give me something to think about. And out of that one, 99% of what I get off of it, I'm going to throw away anyway. And well, the thing about it is, it's the most un ungratifying thing you can do because it doesn't matter what proof you have; it can always be disputed. Yes. There's just no, no. You spoke of video. Have you seen what's the most convincing video thing that you've ever seen? Maybe not even just yours, just something. Actually, the most convincing video I've seen would have to be would have to be the one that we caught down here at the clerk's office, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I've seen everybody's watches, the factor faked, you know, and, you know, um, destination truth and all that. And, you know, they got some really neat stuff. But when you get your own piece of evidence that you can see something on, that, that makes you really wonder. We were doing this investigation at the county clerk's office, and we were doing a ghost bar session. And Stan was running the video recorder, and every time we would answer a question, we would ask a question right before that ghost box would come out and say, you know, give us an answer, you would see a ball of light, just a little teeny thing, come up out of the center of that table, and it would go around a couple of investigators and go right back in that box, and then we would get our answer right after that. We got EVPs at the same time. So, you know, we had video, we had a ghost box going off, and we had EVPs all at the same time. So when I get three little pieces of evidence that coincide all at the same time, I'd say that's probably something paranormal, and that was probably the most convincing thing I've seen. It wasn't a full body apparition, and I'm not a big fan of orbs, you know. I mean, I know full well that it can be a bug, or it can be a fly, or it can be a dust mote, but that wasn't a dust mote. My theory about that is, is the human brain runs on electricity, and it's such a minute amount of energy. You know, you're not going to light up a Christmas tree lamp with the electricity that's going yeah, through your yeah, brain. Yeah. So it's not going to be perceivable to your eyes, but under infrared, it is perceivable. So if you take, when, you know, everybody knows when, you know, that you don't destroy energy, it just changes form. It's conservation of energy. So when we, when we die, that soul or that essence that we leave, when it comes behind our spirit that stays behind, maybe that's what those little glowing balls of light that we see flying around are. And, and you know, it's not, it's not something that you go see every time. That's the first time I've had video that, that I've been a part of that I can actually say I think that's something that we need to look more into. The fact of the matter is, though, that's you know the, the history of that building, you know, and what had happened inside there. Uh, well, what's and, some, what what was the the clerk's office used to be the Stewart Opera House, and the story behind it was there was a young lady, uh, her and her boyfriend were going to a little and this was back in the 1800s. So this was a time when girls did not run away and become actresses. But that's what she wanted to do. Her and her boyfriend were going to meet there at the opera house and run away in a look. Dad got hold of, hold of the story, heard wind, you know, got wind of it, was laid in wait. When they showed up, he shot and killed them both. And there? Yes, oh, okay. in, in that building. That used, like I said, that used to be the Stewart Opera House. Yeah. And the funny thing about it is, on that third floor, which is where the balcony is, is where we wound up getting the most EVPs, and that's where we got that video evidence. And so, you know, it's, I mean, we can hear somebody, there's a moan that we got that just sounded extremely strange. It sounded like somebody was throwing up, you know, and it sounded like somebody would sound that they had been hurt. Uh, you can hear a woman, you know, women sighing. You can hear a woman say, I'm around the corner. You know, we got somebody downstairs in the basement saying, I'm sitting over here, or I'm, there's something better here. You know, you put all that together, along with the stories that went with the building, 
And these weren't just some legend that came out of nowhere. This is stuff that, you know, my wife works with the Historical Society. She was able to get this information when, before we did the place. So we knew that there was something going on, that there may be, it may be possible that something happened there. But when you look at the fact that you've got all those old records there and all, my, all this energy that's left inside that building, you know, when you put all that together and then you start seeing these little bits and pieces of evidence like that, it makes you, it starts making you a little bit more of a believer and less of a skeptic. I would say it's probably because I'm human and I want to know what happens to us when we die and where we go from here. You know, regardless of what your religious belief is, uh, whether you go to heaven, you go to hell, you go here, you go there, I, that, that makes no difference to me. But sometimes things get left behind people are left behind for one reason. I'd like to know why these people are left behind. And, you know, if that was a human being at one time, then they've got to know that we're willing to speak with them and surely they want to try and communicate with us. So that's, I, I guess that's probably where the fascination comes in. The one thing that, you know, people got to understand is, you know, we're, we're trying to keep our credibility up. Uh, so when we come out and we do an investigation in somebody's house or somebody's place of business, if we don't find something, we'll tell you we haven't found anything. That doesn't necessarily mean that nothing's there. You know, we're not trying to call the homeowner or the business owner a liar. It's just we didn't catch anything that day. Ghosts and spirits, you know, they don't act on command. You know, we can't say, well, you're going to appear now. You know, so, you know, if we don't show up with, you know, if we don't get evidence on the first shot, you know, it may take two or three times coming out to a place to get that evidence. Um, but I think, you know, by being honest and saying, hey, look, we didn't get anything, it, it lends to our credibility. We don't want to be looked at like a bunch of liars. We don't want to be looked at like people that are just trying to fabricate stuff and make something up so we can try and make a name for ourselves, so we can try and get a television show or a radio program, you know. Um, I know most of the people in our group, yeah, you know, a television show would be great, it'd be a great way to pay the bills, but I think most of us do this because we like what we're doing, we're going out and we're having a good time, you know, and it, it's, it's something that's caught our interest for whatever reason, and, you know, and usually most of the people in the group is because they've had a personal experience of one form or fashion. My wife, um, she's had paranormal experiences all her life, you know, her, her father has come back and spoke to her time and again. You know, so the idea of paranormal, she has no doubt that it's there. She doesn't need proof. So as far as going out and doing the investigations, it doesn't matter to her. She'd just soon do the case management. She'd just soon go ahead and do research on a place and help us out there. You know, I've had I've had little experiences here and there, but I I need to know that there's more. You know, and I want to find out what it is. And if you know, if I come up with nothing, I come up with nothing. But if I come up with something, I'll let you know. And that's what I think anybody that's in this field, can, you know, what they've got to stand true to is themselves and be honest about it. If you haven't got anything, nobody's going to look at you like you're, you know, like you're a failure in this field. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's too many times, like I say, you can go out a hundred times and 99 times you're not going to get anything out of it. You might sit there for two hours. You may. I've had times when we've gone out for eight, 10, 12 hours, you know, and you get nothing. But you know, I spent that eight or ten hours, or the four hours. But we have four recorders, so I got to listen to each one of those recorders that were set out for four hours. So people don't realize you've got a lot of time has to be spent. This. So if you're going to do this, you got to be willing to go ahead and put the time in with it and do a little bit of research, you know, and and cover all the bases.